Well, Ho Pip, she's a wonderful person. Well, she's been through hell. They put this young woman through hell. What she's had to pay for legal fees and everything else. I let everybody testify. I wanted to be totally open because I knew there was nothing there. There was nothing there, nothing at all. President Trump vehemently defending former White House comms director Hope Hicks just a short time ago. The longtime Trump employee and confidant of the first senior administration official mentioned in the Mueller report to testify before Congress. Well, but as expected, the Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee didn't get a lot of answers from her which, of course, they claim is a conspiracy by the president. We should note Hicks is now executive VP and chief of communications for Fox Corporation. Joining me now, Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus. He also wrote a forward to the published version of the Mueller report. Alan, some Dems say that Hicks', Hicks refusal to answer questions pushes them further down the path towards impeachment. What say you? Mm -hmm. Well, first, just one brief remark about your prior segment. Anybody who ever compares what's going on in our southern border to never again or concentration camps is encouraging Holocaust denial. Because what they're saying is, if all that happened to the Jews in Nazi Germany and Poland is what's happening in the southern border, then there were no death camps, there were no killing squads, there was no final solution. So shame on them for being Holocaust deniers. Now, as far as the current issue is concerned, look, all three branches of government have privilege. You can't call a law clerk from the Supreme Court and ask the law clerk, what did you discuss with the justice? Imagine if they try to call legislative assistance of senators or congressmen, the same congressmen who are demanding that she speak would be up in arms. Each branch of the government has a form of executive privilege, and the president's perfectly entitled to invoke executive privilege. If they think it goes too far, let them take it to the courts. Let the courts decide. But the danger is that you can diminish executive privilege and legislative privilege and judicial privilege, not only for this administration, but for future administrations, and that would have a big structural impact on government and on civil liberties. Uh, Congressman Cicilline was on another network uh, tonight and he's basically saying, look, this is ridiculous. Trump's not a monarch. That's a real constitutional argument. Let's watch. We don't have a king. There's no such thing as absolute immunity. Uh, the, she didn't invoke any privilege. They just used this made-up claim that they don't have to answer any questions, which will so, be rejected again by a court. Uh, the debate well, here you know, it's is that just these ridiculous. Go ahead. Yeah. These congressmen always argue that the president is not above the law, and then they put themselves above the law. They try to get people to answer questions that are not subject appropriately to being asked. They want to impeach without the criteria for impeachment being satisfied. Congress is not above the law. The president acts within Article II of the Constitution. That's not above the law. You know, congressmen and senators can't be prosecuted for what they say on the floor of Congress. That doesn't mean they're above the law. That is the law. But there are different laws regulating presidents, congressmen, and members of the judiciary. They all have forms of immunity. That doesn't put them above the law. That's what the law provides. If you don't like it, change the law. Well, they say it's like, look, there's no absolute immunity from testimony. There's no absolute executive privilege. But conversations no, behind no. closed doors with the president of the United States... I think going back to the Clinton administration, the OLC opinion on this, Saul Weisenberg tweeted this earlier tonight, is pretty clear that this kind of, this is classic executive privilege information. Uh, classic. Well, first, it is, number one. Number two, presidents often invoke executive privilege in close cases and leave it to the courts. That's what our system of checks and balances is about. Congress seeks the information. The president says no. The courts decide. The system works when that happens, and I know of no president who has ever refused to accept the rulings of the court. When the court said to Nixon, turn over the tapes, he did. When the courts told Clinton he had to make certain provisions, he did. And there's no evidence that Trump wouldn't do the same thing. So Congress has the right, the power to go to the courts, but they shouldn't be complaining about the invocation of privilege because they would be doing it themselves if their staff members were being called by prosecutors to testify. Yeah, bingo. Alan, it's great to talk to you and great to hear your thoughts.